Suspension 101. Did you know if we were having this conversation about 25 or 30 years ago when everyone went to the library to get their information instead of just doing an online search? If we went to a library 30 years ago, the information on suspension would be in the same area that you'd find subjects like Ouija boards and dark magic because it's a little bit of voodoo magic. But I want to dispel some of the myths and give you some concepts that you can use. This is gonna be Suspension 101, where we're gonna cover just the basics of this. I'm Kyle with Dirt Bike Channel, stick around. So let me just get one thing out of the way. I am not a subject matter expert. I don't serve a suspension. I don't know everything. I know just a few basics. There's a lot of things that we could cover with suspension and it's kind of a daunting thing because you've got everything from cartridges to valves to pistons to shims to dampers to connecting rods and oil and seals and spring and air and high speed adjusters and low speed adjusters or clickers. We've got compression, we've got rebound. Today I just want to talk about rebound and compression and how that relates to how fast or slow the wheel is moving up and down or how fast or slow the shock is moving and then show you what happens when you're adjusting the clickers. Okay, let's take one thing, let's couch one thing for just a second because I know on all your bikes you've got like a high speed adjustment on your shock and a low speed adjustment on your shock. Let's talk about what that is. High speed and low speed is not how fast you're going. It's how fast the shock or the fork is compressing, right? So if you're, if you're just going through some, some bumps on the trail or whatever, that is a low speed event because the, the, the suspension is moving out of the way at a low speed versus if you go off of a big jump and you come and you, you drop down on the ground really fast, that's a high speed event where the fork or the shock is moving very fast. I, I like to continue to go with this fast and slow idea here. And just stick with me for a minute. Let's say uh, you're, you're moving along on the trail and you want the fork to feel a little bit softer. You want it to be able to move out of the way of the bumps faster. Be constantly thinking of, of how fast or how slow the shock is moving or the fork is moving. What is compression? I'm gonna show you on the front wheel, on the front tire of this Beta. Compression is the forks compressing up inside. Rebound is them rebounding out to their full state. So this is this this shock right now or this fork right now is fully rebounded. It's all the way out because there's there's no weight on the tire. And as the tire comes and it encounters obstacles, it will force the forks up inside of themselves. It'll force these fork tubes to go up inside of themselves, and that is compressing the fork. After the obstacle is cleared or whatever, the forks will then rebound back down. So the speed at which this happens is what we're trying to control. Uh, this, is a, this is a Saks fork on this Beta, and this Beta actually has a very, very good characteristics on, I feel, on how it handles and how it handles this motion. So what we're doing with the fork or, or the shock on the back of the bike is we are transferring, we are converting the energy of the, of the tire being pushed up inside of the forks, we're converting that energy into heat inside of inside of the uh, fork cartridge here. We've got, this, this particular one has springs and it has valves and it has oil. And those, that oil, as it's moving in both directions, is forced through small orifices and it's moving a piston inside of there. And, and, and there's, a lot of, there's a lot of movement with the oil happening inside of there. Now, why do I bring this up? Because the whole idea with a shock or suspension system is to, is to mitigate the harshness of this and to achieve a specific result. So we've got to be able to control the speed at which this can compress and the speed at which it can rebound, right? And how do we do that? We do that with the oil and the valving inside of the fork. There's also springs that help hold up the weight or sometimes it might be air if it's an air fork, but there are some basic concepts in here. We've got a spring to hold up our weight. We have oil and pistons and valves to control the speed at which this can either compress or rebound. So if you want your fork to feel softer, you need to allow it to move faster, right? Because if, if, if it feels like, if the fork feels like every, you feel every little bump, 
that means it's not moving fast enough. You need to allow more oil to pass through the orifices inside here so it can move up faster and get out of the way of those rocks or whatever you're trying to get over. And then you also want to correspondingly have it rebound at a rate that doesn't deflect you off you know, to the side or something like that. You want it to rebound quick enough where you maintain good traction, but you don't want it to rebound too fast so that it deflects you away from an obstacle. So the way that we as the consumer get to adjust this is by the clickers. So you may have clickers on the bottom of your fork, you may have clickers on the top of your fork, or they may be just one clicker on one side is compression, one clicker is rebound on the top, or it might, in this case, I can't even remember, I've got three bikes in here and they're all different. I think on this one, the compression is on the bottom. You guys are gonna kill me because maybe it isn't. Uh, it's different on every bike I have in here. I have, to, I have to look at the manual, but it, let's say I have compression on the bottom and rebound on the top. If I want to slow, if I want to slow down or speed up how fast this can compress, I will adjust the clickers. Let me show you what a clicker looks like. Let's take a quick peek at some of these clickers. So this is the clicker. Uh, you can see it's the inter part of the internals from a Showa fork. And I've got the compression side here. So I've, here's my clicker. And this might be at the top of your fork. It might be at the bottom of your fork. But the, uh, you can hear the clicks. What's happening when I do this? What we're doing is we're controlling the flow of oil through the through the fork so I'll, I'll pull this uh, piston off and you'll be able to see the top of this uh, clicker is nothing more than a needle and that needle is going down inside of this orifice here and that needle if i if i turn this in like this what i'm effectively doing is i'm pushing that needle further down into this orifice restricting the flow of oil so if all this is together if this is all assembled and I turn my clicker all the way in like this, what I'm doing is I'm seeding this down and, that, and that's the bottom. I'm seeding that needle down into the bottom of my, of my piston here. And this is now forcing the oil to go around the piston and through the, through the shim stack. This is, this is another example of this. This is off of a WP fork, like, like an open cartridge fork. And what happens is with my clicker, when I turn this clicker all the way closed, what happens is I have closed the orifice and this is kind of like a bypass. So you can think of your clickers as like the bypass to the main oil flow. And the more I, the more I take and, re and take clicks out, the more oil I'm allowing to go through that system because now I'm allowing oil to bypass through that needle valve and orifice so that not all the oil is forced to go through the main, through, through the main, like push the shim stack, push the shims away and let oil come through the actual main valve. So it's just one way to think of it is with your clickers, you're controlling the rate at which the oil can flow around the main valve. So what does that mean for us here? That means that if I open my clicker all the way up, I'm now taking this needle valve and pulling it out of the shim stack. I, I'm, I'm probably using the wrong terms, but I'm pulling this needle down because I'm unscrewing that and it's coming down, 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 which allows more oil to then bypass through this circuit. Why is that important? That's important because if I'm allowing more oil to go through, that's gonna make the fork react quicker. So it's gonna, it's gonna be able to either compress quicker or rebound quicker. Same thing happens. So the, this happens to be our compression circuit, but the same exact principle applies for the rebound circuit. Here's an interesting way to demonstrate how our clickers uh, uh, control or restrict or allow the flow of oil. If oil needs to come past this valve, it either needs to go past the piston and the shim, the shims, or it can go through this uh, orifice here with our clicker. So I've got this thing completely closed off and I'll stick my contact cleaner in here. And if I spray, I don't know how well you can see, but ev nothing is getting out of, these, out of these ports. It's all just coming back out. Now, watch what happens if I open up the clickers a little bit. So I'm gonna open up uh, several clicks and now I'll spray the same contact cleaner through there and it's going to come out the side. Did you see that? Did you catch that? Oil is blasting out of both of the sides. So as I, as I, as I loosen my clicker and take clicks out, I'm allowing more and more oil to flow through the clicker system and come around and bypass this main, the, the main piston. That is affecting the speed at which the fork or the shock can move. And that's what we're all trying to do. We're all trying to control the speed at which it moves. If, if it can move really quickly, 
then it gets out of the way quickly, that means it's gonna be feel softer. If you, if you restrict this all the way down and you're closing this completely off, like you're closing your, your clicker completely off like this, then no oil can come through the bypass ports and the fork or the shock is gonna react much slower because it all has to come through just one place. Now, something to know also, your clickers have more of an effect once they get down to be fully clothed. It's just kind of an exponential thing, whereas the clicker, like one click when you're almost closed makes more of a difference than one click when, you're, when you've got it halfway open. Just something to note there. Hopefully that gives you a little bit better understanding of what's happening. So if your fork feels too harsh and you feel like you're feeling every single bump out there and you're feeling so much uh, you know, feedback in your hands, you might want to speed up the, you know, allow the front tire to come up faster, allow the fork to compress faster. And the way that you would do that is you would take a couple of compression clicks out to allow more oil to bypass and go through faster. Now you don't want to make too much sweeping changes without also um, adjusting the speed at which your fork can then rebound back down. And keep in mind, rebound is, uh, is, is the same exact thing as compression. Compression is how fast it's coming up. Rebound is how fast it's springing back down. So you might want to adjust that as well. Same thing on the rear, on the rear shock. The rear shock's a little bit more complicated because we've got a high speed and a low speed adjustment, which we talked about just a little bit at the beginning. Uh, but essentially, your, the clickers that you have here on your forks they're essentially low speed clickers, low speed compression, low speed rebound. On the, full, on the shock, you generally have a low speed clicker for compression on the top and a high speed dial that you're dialing in for uh, compression on the top. And that high speed is just how fast the shock is moving. You know, so they're, they give you a little bit more adjustment back there on the shock, generally speaking. Um, but that's a little bit of 101. I cover this more in depth in my Dirt Bike 101 courses, which you can enroll in on my website uh, and come here. If, if you're new to dirt bikes, you can come and we've got a whole host of stuff that we cover. Suspension is just one of the topics that we cover. All the details are listed over on my site. It's Dirt Bike Channel 101 courses. Anyway, that gives you a little bit of a taste of some of the stuff that we cover. If this is valuable to you, if this information is valuable, valuable to you and the information that we talk about on the channel is valuable, please use the links down in the description. When you're buying parts either for your dirt bike or you're buying things on Amazon, you can use the links down in the description or on my website uh, and that helps support my family. We also do dirt bike sweepstakes every once in a while where we, where we give dirt bikes away uh, and those are super fun. So anyway, or you can go to Patreon and do a monthly donation amount if you want, if you're so inclined. So anyway, thank you so much guys and I uh, hope you learned something and we'll see you in the next video.